Oh, guys, good to hear. I am so excited. Guess what? Uh, I hope this isn't about your podcast again. Why? Did you finally listen to it? Before we start this podcast, let me invite you to subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, YouTube, or any podcast jokes. <laughs> The Green Next Door is recorded in front of a live studio audience. Welcome to the Green Next Door. You're listening to my mommy and daddy. And now our feature presentation. And here is your host, my mommy and daddy, Kristen Stella Green. Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 109 of The Groomer Next Door. I'm your co-host, Chris Green, sitting next to me on this snowy day, and quite nice to actually look at, is Sarah. Hello. And I met Sarah and the snow at the same time. <laughs> and, of course, out of the production area is Claire. Hey. How, how are you? Good. Snow is awesome. You, if you're at home, you should try it. Snow, <laughs> try it on your car. Yeah, try it on your car. Snow on your car, it's fun. I it's think she meant try to use, try to make a snowball off the snow that's on top of your car, right? Yeah. That's you. Well, we'll get back. <laughs> we'll get back to you a little bit later because we'll have we'll have a moment with you. Um, this week we're gonna you know go into our normal routine of our weekly roundup, G and D news. Guess the Breed, which we actually have a new contestant this week, which was a, a lot of fun. Um, we have Recall Police this week. And, like I had mentioned just a second ago, a moment with Claire. And, if, you know, the main story this week, if you're on our Facebook page, you have been following it along with us. Um, Cookie the Cocker Spaniel. Uh, there was a story about this dog. We'll go into it, of course, later. Um, it really generated a great deal of attention. A lot of people asking questions. It was a it really difficult because he wanted to get the information. So much was going on, but um, we'll get a conclusion on that one. And I just wanted to mention before we actually you know dive all the way into the show, um, we do actually have an early edition on the podcast. If you subscribe to the podcast or if you subscribe to it through YouTube, you guys get it all extra. Or if you're on our Facebook page, you get it early by a day which may not mean much to some people, but we interact with everybody on a daily basis, so that's always fun. So, let's dive into... The Weekly Roundup. The Weekly Roundup. The Weekly Roundup. Yeah. All right, this week, well, it was a very uh, difficult week, to say the least. Yep. Lots of challenges. <laughs> um, every day we were there late. Monday, we, we had multiple no-shows. Which was rough. Well, it was. It, it wasn't. It wasn't. I mean, we got to get out of work early. How mm. often do we ever get to get out? Well, that was early? nice. That was nice. Now, when I say early, you're all probably wondering. Well, that's that's great. What twelve? No, we were still out at three <laughs> thirty. That's early to us. Three thirty is early well, to it us. It would have been such a bad, big deal if we didn't have other things going on too. It just so happened that we only had three dogs to groom. Yep. Well, if you look, you at had it, the easy day. I the didn't three, though. Yeah. <laughs> three dogs, that's that's three hours worth of grooming. And then, you know, 20 minutes each for the bath, blow dry, and, and fluffing. Um, so you're like, oh, you're only there for like five hours. You're all right. And then it was like, oh, phone call. Yep, phone calls do customers, happen. Customers. Yep. More yeah. phone calls, more customers. And it just kept piling up. <laughs> and, and Katana needed a bath, so I, I was able to bring her in. Mm -hmm. That was kind of nice, but um, oh, that was that was bad. Everything else had after that. It, it went to the toilet. We were there until six or later. It seemed like every night. Um, I'm not even going to go into some of the nightmare that went with this week. It was just if it could go wrong, it did go wrong. It was all right. 
but yeah, well, says you. Now, there was one thing that did actually pop up, and we wanted to discuss it about this week. Go ahead. Uh, okay, so we have quite a few people that come into our shop that are looking for a new groomer. Uh, reasoning being um, they had bad experiences from another groomer, one groomer has called people names or um, have been less than friendly to the dog. Um, multiple different reasons. What This one was a new one for me. Um, I've had people bring their dogs in because groomers have said that their dog was too much of a challenge and they don't want to, to groom the dog anymore. Uh, so they refuse service. I haven't refused service for dog behavioral behavior. Last time I did, I was a rookie. I mean, it was literally my first or second year into grooming. It was the last time I ever turned a dog away for the behavioral. Um, so I get in. Unfortunately, wasn't able to be there while the owner dropped off. He well, had they dropped off really early. early. Yeah. Yeah. And um, Laura says, oh, um, you're going to need to read the note. They read the note, and there is a syringe sitting next to the note. The syringe with some yellow liquid inside of it. It's goldish, and, more yeah. goldy, kind of caramelized color. Whatever, yeah. Um, and it's not one of those um, syringes like they use to administer baby medicine when you're when you have an infant, or um, you need to get a little Pepto Bismol down a dog's tummy. No, this is a needle and syringe. Ordeal. I had a cap and wait, everything. Wait, wait, time out. Hold on. I need to ask you this. Now, <clears throat> you've never, ever been involved in this, ever. This is, you've never, never, nobody's ever done this? This is, this is absolute first. Okay. Nobody's ever brought me a syringe. I have actually been part of this. Huh? Where I went to school. People brought in needles to where I went to school. And the instructor would do it if need be. I thought, I thought we've went over this. I don't remember you telling me that. <laughs> yep. And I was, and I even questioned it. I even said, "Well, isn't that supposed to be a vet?" And the reaction was, "Well, if the customer wants it, we do what the customer wants." I thought we went over this. No. no, no. <laughs> see, see, folks, a lot of things actually come to light while we record this podcast. Yeah, no, that, no. The, well, that 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 was if yeah. the. If the groomer has had experience or has been trained from um, a veterinarian or even a how-to video, well, that's it's, fine. Look, because, it's not hard. You know, you know yeah. how easy it is. It's right. just you wouldn't do it. Right. And then, you know, people give their dogs vaccinations on their own mm -hmm. that aren't um, government regulated like the rabies vaccination. Um, like, you can give your own dogs puppy shops. You can just go down to the feed store and pick them up. Um, but I'm a dog groomer. I'm not a show groomer. I'm not a behavioral expert. I'm just a dog groomer. I'm not going to deal in this. Well, you take the you take the problem out of the equation, and therefore you can't be stuck with something just in case there something does go wrong. Let's just say that the dog has some kind of reaction to this sedation. Um, right away, it's who administered it. You take that away from you, which is the smart thing. You take that that problem out of your hands. You're not liable. Right. So carry on. I'm sorry. I, I thought we would have this sidebar. So, you know, that was funny. That, that gives good insight. Um, I I elected not to use this the sedative. I would rather find out myself on how this dog's going to react versus giving them the, sed the sedative and not knowing how they react in the first place. Because um, a lot of times sedatives just make the dog an angry drunk. <laughs> um, angry drunk. It's I get that reference. <laughs> <laughs> They're still going to try to bite. They're still going to try to wiggle. They're still going to try it. But, but they don't try to hit on you. And they're sloppy. Very sloppy. <laughs> so, but I want to know if the trigger's the feet, I'm going to expect a sloppy drunk trying to bite me for doing the feet. What kind of bars did you go to? The now, one don't in you, California. Don't answer that question with your country accent that the you just. One <laughs> here in Rolla. Yeah, right. All right. Something so, patch. So, 
Now, we, we had, of course, posted this on our Facebook page the day of um, with a little bit more insight. And then, of course, even a picture of the dog. Now, what was the dog like? That was fine. I, <laughs> there was nothing wrong with it. That dog was thing, so awesome. She just kept moving. And she didn't like her feet, so she kept pulling back. Not an ounce of any anger. Not an ounce of any aggression. Um, not even a hesitation. Just quit it. Stop it. Leave my foot alone. Quit it. Mm -hmm. Quit it. Quit it. And then it's like, I don't want my face trimmed. So she kind of pulled up. It was no big deal. So when the owner came and picked up, I explained to him, please don't bring a shot in again. Um, and I asked, okay, where... Where did your dog go? Because when it's this bad, I want to know who's doing it. <laughs> and we, of course, have ideas. So he let us know that it was in a place in, in Houston, Missouri, that um, the groomer stopped the groom and told him that he needs to go get the dog sedated and then bring the dog back for the finishing groom. So the guy left, went to the vet, gave the sedation, went back to the groomer, how did the groom finished? That and 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 really seriously, uh, why is it? Ugh, no, now, no, that's not you... the kicker. That's not the kicker. Here's the kicker: the next time the dog went to go get groomed, the owners were compliant. They understood. Okay, fine. I'm not a dog groomer. I don't know what they went through, but I'm going to get the sedative. They gave him the sedative. Brought the dog in. The groomer calls the owner and says, "Your dog is too sedated. I can't work on it." Sends the dog home to sober up. I I don't understand something, and, and I've, I've been doing this long enough to, to ask, pose this question, and that is, now, I don't know what it was like in California, because I didn't do this in California, but here, for some reason, why is it I feel like everybody who is doing, who's grooming, wants the dog to sit still, be a perfect dog, or completely unconscious when they're actually doing a groom? Because that's, that's been the, the mentality I've gotten off of this, is that all the groomers just want the perfect dog or knocked out dog for the easy money. And that's just not how it works. It's, it's frustrating in a sense, but it's also job security for us. Um, but the problem with our job security is that we are guaranteed to always have a difficult day. Oh, yeah. Because or a big these, dog day. Or a big dog day because now another groomer in town is saying that she can't groom big dogs. So now I have an influx of big dogs too. Me too. And we're already taking... <laughs> Me too. Right? You and I are already taking two large dogs a day. And then Craig has his couple. That he takes uh, you said the word though. Couple. Couple. Like I, I, do, I do his weeks in one day. He's got a couple in one, day, in, in one week. Um, but... So all day off. <laughs> these other groomers get absolutely pampered with perfect dogs, and then here we oh are. Oh my God! Does that it drives me nuts? It's I don't. I don't care if it's in house or it's another salon. I don't want to hear it. I'm. Oh, you have the perfect dog. As I'm wrestling with the dog, and no, you're I'm like, talking about other groomers. Well, I'm in the not area. talking about anybody. Everybody's like, they, their dogs are just perfect, and if they have one dog that even blinks, no, I'm not doing it again. <laughs> and that's unfortunate. Dogs don't stand still. And it's like, okay. Look at the shepherd on Friday. Great dog. I love Phenomenal my Iger. Phenomenal dog. But if you don't know how to handle him, he'll, he'll, he'll take control of you. Right. And he can take control. I am absolutely in love with Iger. Oh, my God. I love that dog. <laughs> absolutely I had love so him. much fun with him. I've never washed him. I've never trimmed his nails. I haven't. You're not I've, missing much. I've but. never even cleaned his ears. But when everybody else grooms him, I get just all the love and attention I want. Oh, he, he's he's a blast. And you know, I, I I see, I see a large number of German shepherds. So. Oh my gosh. My 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 German we are shepherd German list. Shepherd whispers. Central. Yeah, I mean, I I think I see between one average one to three a week. Yeah. Which is a weird number, and that's and then slow when, time. And then when Judy makes an appointment for all her show Germans. Oh my gosh. Yeah, talking yeah, about show sh dogs come in for it. Oh my gosh. Rough days. But, um, yeah, let, let you know, to, to kind of sum up the whole, you know, sedative. If, if your groomer says bring in a syringe with sedation, 
change your groomer. I'm I'm not, I'm just gonna go out there and say change your groomer. Yeah. Um. I. Uh... There's an arrogance no, about there's, that. There's a level of professionalism that needs to be upheld, and that's part of it. Um, you say professionalism. I say cockiness. When you actually want to administer a, a drug into a dog at, at the level of a vet tech, at least, would be the, the qualified person. Well, you want to do it yourself. Now, like I said at the beginning of this, it's not a hard thing to do. You just don't do it. Well, and you don't know what the owner has put inside that syringe. Um, like, I won't take medicine that I don't see coming from its bottle. The bottle on every medicine will either have a description of the pill or will have a picture of the pill on the bottle. So you can measure them up. Okay, that's what I'm taking. One thing I like about if you look at pills now, they always have a display. Yeah, some kind of distinction. And same thing with, um, with pres prescription pills. It will say this pill comes in the oval white with writing on it. Okay, it's oval, it's white, and it does have particular writing on it that it's talking about. But if I myself won't take medicine that isn't coming from a ball that I see, why would you administer? Why would I administer it to a dog that yeah, I don't know? You don't it know. could be it could be the wrong amount. It's not even that. They couldn't. They could have put something for, you know, it's supposed to be millimeters and it was centimeters. Mm -hmm, I, yeah. And they, they just give too much. What what are we to do about that? And you, how would you know? You wouldn't know the proper dosage. See, that's the other part about this. You don't know what's the recommended amount. Plus, you got to think about weight. It's all going to go on weight. So and it's, if, it's, they're, if they're fed food recently? Right. There's so many, you know, contributing factors to this. So, I don't understand... And coming from a place where I saw the arrogance of somebody who would actually do it free will, I didn't understand that. Yeah. I, I don't get it. I, I, we groom dogs are sedated. We do it a lot because we're the only ones in town that have the patience to deal with a hyper-aggressive dog. Um, but we also want to make sure it's kosher. Yeah. Yeah, it has to all work itself out. All right. Well, let's... Let's move on to GND News. All right, this week on GND News, we have two stories that will absolutely make you think. It will uh, raise a little bit of, of your uh, thought process of what's going on. And of course, being that it's January and we have you know cold weather or weird weather wherever you're at, um, it will help you out. So, the first story, it actually was local news um, right here in St. Louis um, this week, talking about nutrition and being that it's January. And the second one is really, really insightful when it comes to how dogs or cats can help your health. So, let's first go into the one that was right here in St. Louis with nutrition. So, Claire... Play that clip. If August is called the dog days of summer, why isn't there a name for January? It's also an extreme weather time for pets. Just ask Dr. Pletz. She's here to tell us about treating your pet nicely when it's really cold. Doctor, thanks so much for coming in. Good morning. How are you today? Fantastic. And you're talking about food yeah. primarily, too. Well, sure. I think nutrition is a very important consideration any time of the year, but there are some special considerations. Um, during the winter months, we tend to be a little less active, so we're going to have to consider that. But First, you want to make sure that you are feeding them um, the appropriate formula for their age or their breed or their size. Puppies, first, puppies burn a lot of Yeah, they food, do. They, they do. They're really going to they're gonna burn a lot of energy. Um, so we've got, we want to make sure we pick the right formula. For example, Mora here. Hi, Mora. It's our golden retriever. It's designed specifically for golden retrievers to keep that coat beautiful, support those joints, all kinds of things that are unique to a golden retriever. Um, and Mora's actually quite a celebrity. She's uh, the star of our new uh, TV, national TV ad that just started airing this Royal week. Canaan. Yes. Which is out of St. Yeah, Charles. Yeah. yeah. Congratulations, so, Mora. Yeah. <laughs> and she doesn't have a big head yet. Not yet. Yeah. Mora, 
She's like, you know, I should move to L.A. and, and produce all these commercials out there. No, more is not like that. You know, but once we've got them on the right formula, in the winter months, they tend to be a little less active. So we want to think about, now you know I have the good stuff, um, you want to think about reducing their calorie intake if they're not going to be as active. Um, it's just like us. You know, the same thing will happen. We reduce our activity, but we don't reduce that intake, and we can put on a little bit extra weight. Now, Randy Naughton goes out with her dogs every day, and she takes them on these long walks. Yes. Even when it's really cold, she dresses appropriately. You yep. can't stop doing that you for can't. a dog. No, and you know, sometimes you have to get a little bit more creative with it. Walks are wonderful. Um, sometimes it's the people that don't want to go on the walks, mm -hmm. not the dogs. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but you can also um, do, you know, take some of the toys. Some of the fun things, you know, like the tennis ball. What? Thank you. Yeah. The ball um, or the Kong? She's like, decisions, oh, like decisions. The Kong. Yes. <laughs> But those will help, you know, to, to entice them to get out and have a little, get some exercise. Just make sure you're being safe. If it's icy, maybe that's not the best time to play these type games. A lot of people think, oh, it's it's really cold outside. I don't have to give them the heartworm medication anymore. No, you got to keep doing that all year round. Absolutely, around. absolutely. You know, it's really important to visit your vet and make sure you have those discussions about what of those preventative measures that you do need to keep doing every month because yes. you're exactly right. Doctor, thanks for coming on. What's in the future for Maura? I mean, more movies and well, TV commercials she's and got a endorsements. Big, quite a bit of stardom ahead of her, I think. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah, we could put her in the weather center. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she could be she the weather like dog, that. Glenn. Look at her. Yeah, that's a cute. Gorgeous. Look at that. She is. She's mm -hmm. very beautiful. Yeah. I need her, I need her potograph, you know? All right, so take any takes on this? I think it raises a good point. <laughs> I think it raises a great point. Uh, now, we have a Royal Canin plant right here locally. Um, I have a, a request to do an interview there. It's just, again, it's like all the other ones out there. They just take forever. But I want to go out there and do it. Just never have heard anything. And they're extremely, extremely loyal donators. <laughs> they donate food all the time. It, it's fabulous. Absolutely just amazing. Yeah, our... Um, Local police, they actually get their their food from Royal Canaan, um, so that's always cool. I, and, I, and then the food, other foods donated to go to the pet food pantry mm -hmm. at the end of the month. Which is something that you'll you'll talk more about once you're more further in Pakal and you have more insight. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, it's all very self-explanatory. I don't really think we have to really, we don't have anything that we could add to it. It, it was very it was tight. Great. Yeah, it was very it very was tight. Said it. It was great. The 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 the, 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 uh, the, the, the. pograph. Uh, there you pograph. go. <laughs> pa, pograph. 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 Oh, I forgot. Pograph. I was, I was just, it was that, a it was a slap my head kind of moment. That was an Al Roker. 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 Yeah. Moment right there. Al Roker at the Rose Parade moment. Yes. Uh, yes. Yep. Oh gosh. There's just some jokes that just leave them alone. Just leave them alone. <laughs> leave them alone. <laughs> Very mind, mind numbing. Yeah. All right. See, after hearing it, I still can't speak right. <laughs> it totally threw you off. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And now let's move on to the one where I really love this one, too. I love them both. This week, I, I, I don't think I've ever been solid in love with both articles. But this one was cool. This one comes from Salt Lake City, Utah. Um, again, I always like to pull... Um, news from all over the country because we are heard in other countries and um, other states and it gives you guys all an opportunity to hear things that you probably wouldn't have heard so that's one of the reasons why i enjoy it but um this one actually talks about how the study was done um which i i don't think you really need to do a study on this i think it's pretty uh, evident evident yeah exactly <laughs> but you know i loved how in depth they went to it on how health and your pets can be affected and how people with pets are more likely to be in better health and then it goes into some other things i never thought of so with that, that said claire play the clip if you own a pet then a new study from george mason university says you're probably in better health than someone who doesn't fox 13's robert boyd has the story in salt lake city when it comes to owning a pet it can be a little expensive when you think about the cost of food and veterinary bills but according to this new study, pet owners are actually saving the American healthcare industry more than $11 billion a year. Skip Danes had both his hips replaced in 2015. He said without his dogs, especially Reggie, he'd probably still be stuck in bed, relying on medical assistance. I would not progress nearly as fast without him because he has to go for a walk 
He has to have somebody feed him his food. Those are commitments that you do that you have to move. And he pushes me to make that progress by simply recognizing that he wants his dad back that could do those things. Skip and Reggie are depictive of a recent George Mason study. According to the study, pet owners in America go to the doctor 0.6% less than non-pet owners, equaling to almost $11.4 billion in annual savings. Well, this study is really exciting news. It's the first time somebody has done one from the point of view of actual health dollar savings. Kathy Klotz of Intermountain Therapy Animals said she hopes this new information entices even more people, especially seniors, to start owning pets. Currently, 65% of American households have a pet. And we really believe that one day um, it will get insurance reimbursement for making people stay in the hospital less long. The study credits pets for reducing a number of health risks. It's kind of a, a holistic effect that animals have on people that affects everything, physical, mental, emotional. Skip says the message is pretty simple. When you take care of your pet, you also take care of yourself. And he believes pets feel the same way about their owners. It was extremely important for me to have somebody support me and love me constantly. There are more than 132 million pet owners in the United States. That's up more than 8 million from last year. In Salt Lake City, Robert Boyd, Fox 13 News, Utah. Okay, so I never really, I love the incentive for um, insurance companies if you have a pet and how having a pet actually could, should, get you know give the insurance companies the incentive especially with our terrible terrible uh, healthcare, system. healthcare system that we have i mean you talk about the worst awful oh my gosh you know our our if if you're not in the united states and you're listening to us from other countries you're probably hearing oh how we have you know this obamacare bs that that that's just restructuring how how uh, healthcare is supposed to be, which is a load of crap. It's harder now to get insurance than it ever was. And it's it's literally like I would I want to say about seventy five percent more expensive, if not more. Yeah. I I've never never in my life would have spent what it is now. I mean, it's ridiculous for us for a family of three. We're getting very off topic right now. Oh, I know, but when I, well, we're on topic. No, you're you're going on tangent. Well, yeah. Okay. But you had a point, and I want you to dive in on that one, where you were talking about puppies and senior citizens. Yeah, they encourage the senior citizens to get a dog. And I believe that they should. But there's a real big part here. Um, Make sure that your grandmother, grandfather, or your elderly mother or father... I hate saying this because there's elderly folks right behind us and they go to our, our, our work <laughs> for boarding. And go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm going to say Keep it going. nice and, nice and slow and, and calm like it's on a smooth jazz radio. <laughs> ah, this is DJ Green here on the smooth jazz radio. 81.0. Anyway, oh, but the new jazz. The part that they did not say is that you need to get a dog that is already trained if you're a senior citizen or an elderly or an older dog that um, isn't as hyper rambunctious as a puppy there are tons of elderly folks that fall and break something hurt something bust their head on something because a puppy doesn't know to stay out of their feet and trip them um, and another thing too that people need to keep this in their right there in front of their minds you need to seriously look at how old a person is that needs this dog is the dog going to outlive them the likelihood is the dog going to outlive them if the dog outlives them do you have a backup plan where that dog's going to go no matter what its age it's true you know, all of a sudden you're, you're rendering this this puppy you know this this 82 year old woman wants to get a puppy so she gets a puppy oh, it's like a, a, mo- a seventh month old puppy and the lady dies at 92 okay that puppy is is 10 years old that little chihuahua 
Hell, it's another five years left well, sometimes. a chihuahua's lifespan is 12 to 18 years. Exactly. So, so think about that. What's going to happen? So now you're, you you just rendered, um, or surrendered. Oh, it's a, like a rendered? Where, where are we going rendered. with that? <laughs> Sorry. Surrendered a 10-year-old chihuahua that has another couple years to live when senior pets are the hardest pets to place. It's best to get older pets that are, you know, about midway through their lifespan. Well, you've now alienated the people behind me. They have now decided that, that now, what have they done? Look at that. They're feeling bad about this. Their, their head is hung low and now they're upset. No, they're grabbing their stuff. They're leaving now. <sighs> Even worse. Now they're actually <laughs> figuring out who are we surrendering to pets. Look at what you did. <laughs> Actually, you know what I what I, I look at? My takeaway from it well, is... another senior couple sitting down. <laughs> <laughs> here's, here's my takeaway, and, and it's a little bit different of an approach that you're going to take, and that is if your mom, dad, or you, if you are you know a senior and you are thinking about having a pet, I always look at the one thing, and that is what is your income? Are you on a fixed income? Because that's what's going to make the difference. The fixed income is what can be very challenging. Because when you think, if you're going to feed your dog healthy food, it's not going to be like buying a bag of crap that you can get 1,500 pounds for $3. Mm -hmm. Because it's every part of the body, of the organs, that nobody's going to you know, put in anything else. Um, the other part is, is that you got to worry about grooming. That's can, that can get very tricky. Very and expensive. Nails. You got to make sure the dog doesn't use his toes as fingers to grind up against the the uh, the skin right. of an elderly person because right. the skin will rip. Um, now that, with that said, I mean now all dogs can scratch and, and rip skin. But some dogs, they a lot of dogs, they know not to use their nails to grab on things. Right. Um, there's so many. And we see it every time a walk in nail trim comes in of an elderly person. Well, he keeps scratching me. And I put the dog down once I'm done, and the dog's jumping. Oh, yes. And jumping and oh, jumping. Yes. And then when they jump, they claw down the thigh of the owner and down the leg. Yep. And then the owner goes to pick it up, and the owner's balance is horrible. They go to pick up the dog, and they almost fall over themselves. Yes. And then once they pick the dog up, the dog's scratching them everywhere. Yeah. I don't care how much you grind dog's nails, they still can scratch. Yeah. These are just things, I mean, by no means are we trying to discourage anybody from actually getting a dog. No. Actually, we're, we're, what Which we're is... trying to do is we're trying to give the good insight to it. These are things that just Make just an educated about. Yes. buy uh, uh, when, or adoption. Make an educated one. Um, Adopted. A large dog, like a, um, an elderly person with a large dog, and I mean large as in a lab, not as a Newfoundland, <laughs> but something <coughs> that doesn't mat, something that's big enough that even with poor eyesight they can still see, um, versus a little tiny chihuahua that zips back and forth that's pure black. You know, they're not going to see that in the middle of the night when they got to go up to go to the bathroom. Well, yeah. Um, so something that's larger and something that's gentle. Labs at an older age tend to be more gentle giants. Make sure that the dog's neutered. Make sure the female dogs are spayed. It lowers their uh, hyperness. But um, be very cautious when getting a senior a pet. Because this pet that's supposed to help their life their quality of life can ruin their quality yeah, that, of life. Yeah, that was the takeaway. I didn't. I, I was like, okay, you're, you're given the positives, but you got to actually still, the disclaimer has to be put out there. All right. Well, we have a, um, I'm sorry, one last thing. We have um, a lady that we, I just spoke to yesterday. Her, her poodle passed away. The lady's in her mid-80s. She ended up rescuing a seven-month-old Morky. They are high energy. They go, 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 go. And she's already to the point where she can't train the dog. She can't stand long enough to be able to train the dog how to sit or stay. Um, her son that she lives with works all the time, so he can't train the dog. And so now the dog is just left to go piddle on a potty pad. Oh, man. And 
run around the house causing a muck. A muck, a muck, a muck. She's already tripped like 15 times back in, in a month span because there, she herself can't walk very well. So don't put another tripping hazard in front of her. Very true. All right, well, that concludes GND News for this week. And now on to the game show sweep in the podcast nation. Guess the breed. Guess the breed. With your host, Chris Green. All right, this week on Guess the Breed, we have a newcomer. This could be bad. Now, this is a podcast, so you have to talk. Nobody can uh, see you. That's true, yeah. And you have to talk loud, because okay. I, I can see everything you're saying. Ha, uh, okay. Did you see what I just had on, on the screen? You didn't see it. No. Okay. No. Here's the rules on Guess the Breed. Okay. I'm going to give you a bunch of li- a list of attributes that this dog has. Right. And you're going to try to guess. You got it? Yep. Now, people say you're smart, so we're going to find out. Okay. I mean, I don't know who those people are. Ha, ha. Anyway. (laughs) (laughs) What I love about this is there's no edit. (laughs) Wonderful. So everybody's just like, what the what? All right. Who are you? Uh, Bridget Cunningham. We don't need your last name. Well, whatever. I don't know these things. Now people are going to be like, ooh, let's Google. Ooh. Okay. You ready? Yep. Oh, I changed the, the actual breed. That wasn't supposed to be there. Okay. All right. Here we go. This dog is not hypoallergenic. Lifespan, 12 to 15 years. Okay. The temperament, even-tempered, gentle, excitable, admirable. Yeah, that's, that's the word. Determined and intelligent. The weight for the male is 22 to 24 pounds. If, if you want it in kilograms, I can give that to you. <laughs> no thanks. Um, I, I don't know if you're a math major. So uh, female is 20 to 22 pounds. Height for the male is 14 to 16 inches. Female is 13 to 15 inches. The colors are brown and white, orange and white, white and tan, tricolor, red and white, chocolate, Fry, lemon, and white. Any ideas? Um. Normally I have an origin, but this one doesn't have it. Huh. That takes out my guess thing, because I'm pretty sure that that one does have an origin. Um. Well, I, obviously it has an origin. Right, it's not in my list in front of me. Ah. Uh, um. Some sort of spaniel comes to mind? Trying to think. He's thinking, this could be a while, maybe. <laughs> wow, you actually, you're having smoke coming off your head. I know. That's amazing. I'm so hot. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Or, or your brain's working overtime. Or it's working overtime. Hey, um, there's now another reason why people are like, I'm going to Google who this Bridget girl is. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um. And I made it so easy. It's only an hour show. <laughs> um, shoot. No, I'm sorry. Shoot is not a dog. I know. I know. You work with dogs. You should know this. I know. I know. My brain is so sad. <laughs> Kids, don't do drugs. <laughs> Also, don't study till 1 a.m. in the morning. Um. That's what they all say, kid. <laughs> You've been thinking for three minutes. Can I give up? Well, enough? you can take a shot. Take a blind shot. Anything. Talk for Spaniel. It's all there, black and white, clear as crystal. You get nothing. You lose. You are wrong. I figure. And there's, of course, that sound effect that's playing just after that, but you won't know it. No, I won't. Um, but anyway, it is a beagle. Uh, okay. Yep, okay. It makes sense now, yeah. It does. Thank you for playing. Guess the breed.
Okay, well we got a recall this week. Came out on January 4th. And I will, and it's funny because they actually, <laughs> when the recall came out, they mistitled uh, it with the date. They actually put January 4th, 2015 because it's brand new year. They actually oh, missed. Oh, I forgot the uh -huh. 16, not 15. Yeah, it's so funny. Okay, folks, here we go. Um, it's from Big Dog Natural of Brick, New Jersey has announced it is a voluntary recall of a select lot of its Big Dog Natural Chicken Supreme raw dehydrated dog food because it may contain some salmonella, which is the typical, seems mm -hmm. like a typical thing when you see a lot of. The company is also recalling its Fish Supreme product because it may cont be contaminated. Um, the affected products were shipped to online customers during the periods from October 31st, 2015 through November 13th of 2015. Again, that was the Chicken Supreme and the Fish Supreme. Um, it says the salmonella uh, can affect animals eating the products. Duh. Um, and there is also risk of humans from handling contaminated pet products, especially if they have not thoroughly washed their hands after contact with the product or any surface exposed to this product. Healthy people affected with salmonella should monitor themselves for some or all of the following symptoms. Nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, or bloody diarrhea, abdominal cramping, and fever. Rarely salmonella can result in more serious ailments including uh, artery infections, arthritis, muscle pain, eye irritation, and urinary tract symptoms. So just be on the lookout for that. If you guys did actually get that product, obviously stop um, giving it to your dog. Uh, unfortunately with that time length, it's kind of one of those things, it's probably all gone. Contact the manufacturer regarding this. And that should conclude this week's Recall Police. And now, a moment with Claire. So, we're sitting here with Claire. How you doing? Good. I think we already established that earlier, but I just want to double check to make sure you're doing good. Sure. Sure? Yeah. I got a question for you. How, how do you know when a dog needs his teeth brushed? <laughs> First, you have to get a... Well, how do you know when they need it? Uh, cause, uh, when you have, uh, like, gunk in the, in dog teeth, uh -huh. you need to use it. Okay. Yeah, everywhere, you need to use it. Okay, what else? Honey, if they can't see you, they can't see you, it's a <laughs> podcast, they can't see what you're doing with your hand. <laughs> no hands, no hands! <laughs> Sorry, folks, that was an inside joke I was not expecting for her to say. <laughs> okay, so. Okay, what? I don't even know what the joke was. She, no, no hands! hands. No, no hands! hands. I, don't, I, I don't know the joke. No hands! No hands! Slap hands? Oh, okay. Slap hands! Slap hands! Okay, anywho. So, when a dog comes up to give you a kiss on the face, is that when you know it's time to start brushing their teeth? Yeah, if you if the breath comes out uh -huh. and it's really bad, uh -huh. you should brush the teeth. With what? Your toothbrush? No, <laughs> of course not. Not with your toothbrush? No. Why? Cause you have to have a different kind of toothbrush, a dog toothbrush. Can they use your toothpaste? No, that's a good question. Can can dogs use people's toothpaste, or do they have to have their own? They have to have their own. Okay. How often should they have their teeth brushed? Well, when they have disgusting look, when they have uh -huh. uh, disgusting mouths, uh -huh. it looks like rotten. <laughs> okay. And then, if so, it, so it's safe to say you gotta brush it every day. Not every day, not every time. You just have to, uh, when you see the dog. And it has no uh, clean teeth. You have to clean it. Okay. So, thank you very much for that enlightenment. But one thing I'm pretty sure you got to do is brush them every day. Yes. No hands. 
<laughs> no hands. No hands. <laughs> And this was a moment with Claire. All right, everybody. Well, we are on to our main topic, which means we're kind of winding down. Well, it's been a quick podcast this week. Um, this week's main topic, as I mentioned in the opening of the show, was going to be about Cookie, the Cocker Spaniel. Now, what? <laughs> Sorry, I just saw a video of a dude popping a, a champagne bottle in someone's private. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, let me tell you, Sarah does no prep for the show. Shows up and watches videos. I've prepped for the show for 11 years now. <laughs> you're a goober. All right. <laughs> Sorry. So, if, you, um, if you're unaware of the story, Cookie, the Cocker Spaniel, um, was in Southern California and had been surrendered to the San Bernardino Animal Shelter. Now, there's been a lot of stories about this dog, but the part that's upset me is the stories did not add up. They weren't depicted right. They seemed to be missing something. Pretty much what the stories had detailed was, here's a dog that was surrendered to a shelter, and it was heartbreaking because the dog actually was crying because the owners walked out with another dog that they were adopting. A young dog. Yeah, because the way they painted the picture is just that they came in with an elderly dog that they didn't want anymore. They dropped it off and they walked out with a new younger dog. Right. Now, which I do, wasn't the case. Now, I have actually, and, and this is something that, that has been a topic, um, the moment that I posted it on our Facebook page, Everybody was asking questions. Well, why would the shelter do this? And what what's going on? Da, 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 da. And we've, you know, it was great. All of the listeners who actually were posting questions and comments on there, you guys were all amazing because you all had very good points. Now, of course, you're all asking, well, what else happened? What's the story? Can you find out more? Since we posted this last, I want to say Saturday, I think it was last Saturday, um, I posted it on our Facebook page. The moment that happened, people had been asking us, sending us messages, commenting on it, um, all kinds of different things. Giving false information. <laughs> we had a couple people come on there. You know, bless in. their heart, they're trying, and, yeah. but it wasn't exactly accurate. Right. And so, from the moment that this happened, starting Monday, actually, I started on Sunday. Um, starting to investigate it and look into it a lot heavier. Everything happens right after we record the podcast. Like, we, who, who, who knows what's going to happen tomorrow? Well, you know, you know with, with Saturday Night Live, I don't know how many of you guys listen to it, but when they actually do a, a do show on Saturday... Do you watch? You watch. Well, some people listen. Oh, that's right. Yeah, there's ways of listening. You can listen. Um, but people will... I'm not you very know, good listening. <laughs> well, to listen to a <laughs> podcast is obvious. Um... You know, they, they do a show, and pretty much right away, they're right back. The net, you know, on Monday, starting to, they go into an into their own offices, and, and they just start writing, and writing, and writing, and writing. It, that's what we do. We we finish a podcast, and the moment we start the podcast, it's, it's up in the cloud, ready to go. We're already ready for the next one, and we're preparing for the next week's show. Um, and that's what we did. Right away, on top of, you know, Animal Shelter, the San Bernardino Animal Shelter, uh, tracking down the actual, um, finding out that the shelter didn't have the dog any longer, went to an actual non-profit that was helping out, lots of different things. Um, now, we actually had the shelter, or the non-profit that was going to, that handled this. They were going to come on here and actually talk about Cookie and what they're doing, but... That's one of the hard parts about doing this podcast, folks. Is we are back and forth, email after email after email with these people, and sometimes they just drop off. And it can be very frustrating because I actually wanted to get you guys a full update. Um, if I do get any more on this from the actual shelter, from the nonprofit, I'll post it on our Facebook page and give you guys the update that way. But I do have one thing, and that is I have a statement that was given to me from the San Bernardino Animal Shelter, and I'm going to read it to you guys um, because they they don't they're pretty much probably being bombarded as yeah I they're can they're getting a bad rap when they really shouldn't they really are um, 
and, and working with our local shelter, I understand. So that's why I was like, okay, well, what can you guys, you know, give me to actually, you know, do this article and, and at least paint you guys in the right light because they've been just hit hard. So from a statement from the shelter, it's a, it, it, it was from Mr. Perez. It says, here is the response sent regarding Cookie. Thank you for your concern on this matter. The dog and its its num its identification number was A four eight nine seven zero three. The name of the dog was Nata N A T A originally. So I don't I don't understand how they came to Cookie, but uh, who is also known as Cookie was rescued the same day. Um, she was surrendered by her owner, the dog Osa, which is another dog. And that, that number was A489704, was returned to the owner, not adopted. So, right the there. The dogs got out. They picked them up. Right. They brought them to the shelter. Right. They came to pick up one of the two. Right. So, both dogs got out. These guys, you know, did their job. They did their job correctly. Yes. The owners of these dogs came in. Now, this is where it gets to be fun and not in a good way. The owner, and it's plural because there was two, there was multiple people. The owner signed over Cookie because they could not care for her medical issues and felt that she would be better off with a rescue group who could provide her with such care. Unfortunately, the, do, the, the law does not allow us to dictate whether or not an owner can reclaim their pet if they are signing over another. I believe in the situation it worked out the best for Cookie so that she can get the medical care she needs. And they're right. That is right. Very much. What the best thing that happened for Cookie was to be signed over. But it's not the best thing for Osa to have to go to a family that can't afford anything. Actually, I, I, I'm going to take this back. It wasn't Mr. Perez that sent it to me. It was Jennifer... Uh, Gerner? Doesn't matter. Gerner? Uh, yeah, that's what I, I said. But Gunner? she's the supervisor of the actual shelter. Um, it goes on in a PS. As you can see, the original presumption of what actually occurred in this situation was incorrect. Unfortunately, we cannot provide the information directly regarding the rescue who took Cookie. Therefore, we cannot speak to the current status of Cookie. The best we can do is provide your number and information, which I didn't need them to do. I, I had already got in touch with the actual organization that had her. Um, hold on one second. Um, I will look forward to an email to my rescue coordinator. They went on to say they can they can actually um, try to pass our stuff over. Now, um, I had already been in touch with OC Small Paws, who actually took care of um, Cookie. The difficult part, this is where it got to be very difficult. Um, the she does need a lot of care. I don't know what the care that she needs is. I don't know her current status. Um, I do know that another organization, which is, they were the ones who were going to come on here, um, it was all the way in Seattle, Washington, which I thought was really strange. I mean, what a difference uh, of destination. You're going from Southern California all the way to Washington. I mean, you're talking 1,500 miles. I mean, it's pretty, pretty uh, leveled. But... Um, as you can tell, the story was misrepresented. Um, I, I, obviously, when you l read these different things on, on Facebook or in different news publications, whether they're online, they paint them the way that they know that their readers are going to actually gravitate to it. Yeah, they, they, they get their jollies by putting wrong information out there and watching the frenzy. Right, and, and which you get to create. It's unfortunate because... Nobody can ever really truly know what the story is without really doing investigative work. Beforehand, you used to be able to turn on the news, and the news reported truth and accuracy. Now, you turn on the news, and 50% of it's lies. Well, it is, or it's, it's, it's modified, because if it, if it bleeds, it leads. Yeah, it, they tell 25% of the story, and they leave out the rest of the story that made the difference, and all of a sudden... You know, this one person's all of a sudden a jerk, yes. when in all actuality, they're not. Well, Just like with the shelter. People were like, this shelter's sick? Who's running this place? I know a few people just were very vile when it came to um, their opinion on the shelter. Yeah. And, look, 
they didn't do anything wrong. They actually they did their only, job. Yeah, actually. they they can only do what the state allows them to do. County, a county will county. actually dictate it because every county has its own bylaws. Exactly. <clears throat> so that's so gonna be a problem. If you have any problem with the shelter, take it up to you know to city hall. Well, actually, if you have any problem with the San Bernardino shelter, you're actually at fault. Um, I'm gonna say it right there. You're at fault. I don't know. I don't know wrong. them. Well, they're I, wrong because their opinion would be on wrong. this one. Yes, yes they're, on I don't this know case. the shelter. No. I've never been to the shelter. I don't know how clean that shelter is. All I know is that in this particular case, people went a little too far without knowing um, the full story. Yeah. Yeah. And at first, I was like that too. I'm like, that's sick. Well, if you recall, though, um, I was I was very you upset. Were, you were, and and somebody, the first person said, well, why would they actually adopt out? A younger dog and I said well I have heard that there are instances where a dog is too much for somebody to handle medical or whatever and they cannot they have to surrender the dog I did not know the full story and that's what what really led to actually pursue this story to actually find out the full story um, again I'm, I'm pretty upset that I couldn't get the uh, conclusion part from uh, OC small paws or the other Shelter, the nonprofit that was handling it, um, because I really wanted to, to tie this one up in a nice bow. When you're when you're talking it about it happens, but it does happen a lot with this, and it, it is frustrating because I wanted to actually paint this in the right light. Well, what's nice that we know now, and what's comforting to know, is that Cookie's being very well taken care of. Yes, Cookie's Her needs getting are being met. yeah, Cookie's uh, medical needs are being met. Her everything is being met. Um, it's kind of good in a sense to have this much of an uproar over a dog. Yeah. Because it, who knows, if nobody cared about this uproar, who's to say that dog would ever have found a rescue? Or if a nonprofit would have stepped in for this one particular dog? It might not have. Might not we have. don't know. There's so many dogs in need. So when one, one situation is blown out of proportion, might have saved her life. Well, you know, to what? at least live out the next couple more years because cocker spaniels have a long lifespan. They do. I mean, she's twelve. I want to say between ten and twelve. I want to say twelve. I, so I can't remember. So she's got the age. another couple, you know, couple of years. I we groom a cocker spaniel that's thirteen years old right now, fourteen years old, and she's still kicking <laughs> and biting and moving into grooving. So she's got a lot of life left. Right, and and you know. This situation shows that, look, everything you read, whether, like I said, whether it's on Facebook or a lot of these, these publications are online kind of news things, their, their whole purpose is to gravitate readers by coming up with these catchy stories. Um, I, you know, I'm actually glad that Cookie was surrendered because these people realized I can't take care of this dog instead of just forcefully saying, no, I'm not going to get rid of my dog. I mean, I'm not going to treat it, but I'm not going to get rid of it either. You know, there, there's where you got to say, well, you know, the, the story originally said, oh, how Cookie was crying when she saw her family walk out with a new puppy. Completely wrong. The dog could be whimpering. Yeah. Because she saw her, her, her friend. Mate. Yeah, her... I don't know if it was a litter mate. Well, I don't know if it was. I, I don't, that was what uh, I... They would have given up both of them at that point if it was a litter mate. True. But saw their, you know... Other dog that they had the, the how cookie. about pup mate? Pup mate, that's yes. Their other half leaving with their family, and they're standing there. You know, I read something online. Um, Kelly, and it was something that Kelly uh, shared on Facebook. Um, when dogs are being put down at the vet, the veterinarian gives them a choice to either stay there and watch their dog be put down, or leave. And it's, it says, you know, stay there with your dog. Because the last thing they see before they get put down is you leaving. Right. And that's the hardest thing on any dog is to see you leave. Because they don't know and there's no guarantee you're coming back. So here Cookie saw her family, her life, leave without her. It, it's, it's heartbreaking. Yeah, they don't understand like we do. But I'm pretty sure the understanding's there. Well, no, the dog understands. And I, I don't, I'm not even going to open this up for discussion. The dog knows when 
it's being left behind. It, it knows. Um, you know, I, I could I could jump to conclusions and say, well, this dog got out of the yard. You know, I'm a big a big cry crier to this. I, I shout out to this all the time with people who have their dog and they don't secure their fence. Mm -hmm. We see so many times dogs are running loose. They have tags, but they got out. I'm always ticked off over it because it's like, control this. You're, you could do better. You know, it's, it's one of those things. I don't, I don't know what the situation was. I could jump to conclusions, call the people out for it. I'm not going to, because then it would be no better than the actual original story. Um, but I wanted to set it straight. You know, it's not the shelter's fault. They did nothing wrong. They, they did their job. They actually, they actually rescued both of the dogs, both Cookie and her pup mate, by being out on the street. They got them. They got them in a safe environment until the owners came and picked them up. The owners did right, though, by one side, because they were either microchipped or they had proper tags. So... You know, we can we can go round and round in circles on this. Well, it, it comes down to what's better and what do you think is a good dog owner? Like last like week. Like last week, yeah. Is a good dog owner someone that's able to feed and house and love that dog until it gets sick and can't afford it? Or is a good dog owner allowing that dog to sit in that shelter day in, day out until someone who is got a couple thousand dollars stashed in the bank account that can afford a couple thousand dollars on a surgery right and i i don't even know so, what the medical needs are for this dog right that's the hard part you know i didn't even get that much i will I, i'm try I'm, I'm pretty sure we I'll, are busy ourselves well, and we yeah. have a very excruciating no, I'm week pretty, coming up i'm pretty sure that at some point here i'm gonna get a, another email oh are you still interested in me being on the podcast because i get this quite often well i've already recorded the episode so no you're not coming on um but I will, but I will get the information and I will post it on our Facebook page. That way, at least you guys know where the dog is, what the needs are, things like that. That I will definitely, you know, follow up with if I get it. Unless it's already adopted, then that's none of our Well, that's business. if I get anything. That's even if I get anything back. Like, like I said, yeah. if it's adopted, then it's none of our business. Well, no, if it's adopted, there's nothing to be done. Um, what's great, though, is that the dog was picked up immediately and... Its needs were met right away, which is great. Which again was not in the story. Yeah. Kind of, kind of frustrating. Anything you want to add on this one? No, I think it's good. Well, by the sound of the applause, I guess Claire turned on the uh, the sign, so everybody's Applaud applauding now. us right now. Well, I am Chris Green. Have a petastic week. I'm Sarah Green. Make sure everybody realizes life is so short. Play with your pet. Claire. I'm Claire Green, and. Play with your kittens and play with your dogs and pets. All right. Bye-bye, everybody. Okay, gotta go. It's my bedtime. Place without doubt. Worst episode ever. Rest assured that I was on the internet within minutes registering my disgust throughout the world. They're still doing a podcast? I'm Baloney Pits, and I approve this podcast. <laughs> okay.